Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello students welcome to the NPTEL uh, online course uh, titled Visual Communication Design for Digi uh, Digital Media Today after discussing principles and elements of design and also we have discussed different kind of uh, digital media platforms in the previous lectures. Right now we will start with um, typography. So uh, today we will discuss the usage of typography in digital media paradigm. So because uh, in digital media paradigm uh, you can take uh, web design from graphic uh, design, animation, game design, everywhere typography will be an integral part of design. So, with graphics, with um, all other information, visual informations, uh, typography, the text will uh, be there, will, uh, will be present in the uh, any kind of uh, genres of visual communication design, especially in digital media paradigm. So, in this uh, uh, lecture on typography, this will be divided into two module. First, we will discuss about background of typography. We will discuss uh, the evolution of typography in digital media, how it evolved and then uh, the morphology of typography, how we will uh, identify a particular typography, how the different uh, typographies uh, has a different kind of uh, morphology and then uh, based on this morphology, we will uh, try to classify different typefaces. We'll, uh, uh, see how this evolved, different classifications of ty typography evolved through ages and uh, how their morphology uh, changed. Then based on that uh, 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 knowledge of typography will uh, come to the design, come to uh, visual communication design that will be the second module uh, of under typography. There we will uh, understand the, uh, the quality of typography, uh, uh, the legibility and the pictorial quality, how much legible the typography is, how much ornate or um, aesthetics. Uh, it has. So, uh, there is a function and form both aspects of typography we will uh, discuss. Based on that next will be a selecting uh, a typography uh, for a particular design that we will discuss and then we will discuss uh, if we are designing a new typefaces from uh, some inspiration board or some mood board how we can design a typeface which uh, will have some visual identity and a visual clue of a particular um, style. So, that we will discuss and then we will uh, discuss the functional aspects of typography that is the uh, how we achieve hierarchy in uh, uh, design. So, uh, as we discussed in the principle of design there is a hierarchy or emphasis or there will be a visual uh, line when uh, observer uh, the user is looking at a visual. Uh, be it a web design or be it a graphic design, there will be a, uh, uh, they, they, their eye will follow up a particular guideline and there will be an emphasis or focal point into that. So, how typography can create that? So, we discuss this with uh, um, shapes, uh, colors and other things, but uh, with the different morphology of typography with the variance in the type of uh, faces, we can also create that. So, that will be the discussion and then impact of color because color is a very contrasting, very uh, color creates a very uh, contrasting and drastic impact on type faces, we will also discuss that in the second module. So, coming to the first uh, module, uh, so we will discuss the evolution of typography. So, initially uh, the typography if we uh, go back in uh, history it was uh, we started with stone carving. So, uh, the first in uh, ancient uh, Roman uh, uh, Greek we started the Latin fonts and even in uh, Egypt and other uh, areas Mesopotamia there were uh, clay tiles and on uh, the clay tiles they used to uh, engrave the clay tiles and then uh, sun dried. So, that, that was the initial phases of typography. So, it um, was it uh, came from that paradigm and uh, on the if we uh, come back to the far eastern side then the, the Chinese we know they, they used um, paper, they invented paper from uh, bamboo and other things and then uh, they used to uh, use ink on paper um, as a calligraphy ink. So, that was their uh, mode of uh, first typography 
and uh, then after that there was uh, metal casting, uh, copper letters engraved on that and then cut using stylus on uh, something um, like wood uh, on wood or on stone uh, cut with chisel that was the initial uh, paradigm of uh, writing, uh, uh, paradigm of communication. So, here also we have Devnagari uh, script and the here in this uh, photograph you can see. So, it is engraved on stone that is uh, that this was found in India, uh, this was there in ancient India as well. So, these uh, photographs are taken from uh, Emil Ruder's typography. So, uh, this is a very uh, good book on uh, typography you can refer to that. Then we all know during uh, renaissance in Europe, uh, Gutenberg uh, made a press. So, uh, that was when uh, the, uh, there was a transition from handwritten uh, typography to printed media. So, there was a uh, this uh, press gave us a uh, opportunity to uh, print the same uh, same book in a multiple uh, uh, get a multiple uh, copy of the same book or it's um, the mass production started so for that it was not uh, it was very difficult to write a same uh, book again and again so uh, the guten uh, using the gutenberg's uh, press it was um, much more easy so the first thing uh, as we all know it was the bible uh, which was uh, printed uh, in gutenberg's press so, there was a paradigm shift from handwritten or engraved uh, uh, communication process to printed communication process. So, here we can see some uh, examples of handwritten uh, typefaces where uh, we can see the first three uh, rows were handwritten typefaces uh, and the next was um, printed typefaces which was created. Uh, uh, created in the uh, in that era and uh, when we look at the first typefaces it was evolved from the calligraphic handwritten typefaces so here in this uh, picture which is placed in the middle it is actually a handwritten gothic uh, style of typefaces that time the uh, good calligrapher used to write something write uh, the book uh, the several uh, they used to uh, uh, copy the book um, uh, by um, their ca calligraphic um, um, uh, usage of calligraphy. So, this was the uh, style of gothic uh, calligraphy and this is the Gutenberg's Bibles uh, first printed Gutenberg's Bibles uh, one page uh, I have shown you. So, this resembles the typefaces which was printed resembles the handwritten calligraphy uh, calligraphic style of that era. So, in this uh, scenario also we can discuss uh, what was the process of the uh, printing. Uh, the uh, designers of the typefaces used to uh, design the typefaces, uh, they used to draw the typefaces, then artisans used to carve the typefaces out of uh, wooden blocks. Then there will be uh, uh, sm uh, small letters and then there will be capital letters. Uh, there were uh, two drawers on the uh, uh, press. So, one uh, drawer was used for the small letters and the other drawers were used for the uh, uh, capital letters. Eventually, the small letters were uh, kept in a lower drawer and uh, uh, the capital letters were kept in a higher um, the upper drawer that is why upper case the name upper case evolved from that thing because it was uh, placed in the upper drawer and the lower case was uh, placed in the lower drawer for ease of use that is uh, how the name uh, upper case and lower case evolved. And after that, uh, these uh, all these uh, typefaces were um, will be uh, placed on a wax blo uh, block, and the first uh, print will be done. That uh, and after that, there will be a proof reading. So, if the print is proper, then um, they will go uh, with the proof, uh, go with the uh, set uh, setup. Or if there is some error, so they will pick up the um, uh, the blocks, wooden blocks, and place it again on the um, wax mold, and after it is final they will uh, put lead on that. So, lead will be casted and that will be the mold of one page that was the process. So, uh, yeah that was the process. So, then uh, we come back to the evolution. So, in 15th century Italy, uh, Italy it was a, uh, initially it was a, a, go a gothic influence. So, uh, the litera antica was the first um, uh, style which was evolved from a classical handwritten uh, style. Then Nicholas Jensen a French person he uh, 
made another print. He uh, learned print uh, printing technology from Germany. Gut uh, Gutenberg was uh, uh, a German, and so it started with Germany. And then uh, he came to Italy. And Italian style of uh, aesthetic style was a little different uh, than German. And from there, uh, the, uh, the typefaces, the style of typefaces changed, and it became more uh, rounder and lighter in form. So that from that, uh, first Roman typefaces generate. Then there was uh, many other different uh, fonts, including Garamond, Bembo, uh, Palatino, Jensen, which uh, which was named after the printer, uh, the printer who generated this kind of uh, kind of forms, uh, th this kind of typefaces. And each and every uh, print uh, print has uh, printers has their own typefaces, and people used to recognize the book uh, by looking at the typefaces. So each and every printer has their own different kind of typefaces and they used to design their own typefaces. So these typefaces were generally called humanist. Why this uh, the term, uh, term humanist uh, that we'll discuss in, uh, under the classification when we'll discuss the ca uh, classification because it has some um, it has um, easier legibility and more abstract in nature. So uh, if we look at the previous typefaces, there were a lot of ornate decorations uh, which was there in the uh, because it evolved from the calligraphic style. In humanist uh, form because it uh, evolved from that uh, renaissance period, that time it was much more simplified. Before renaissance as we uh, if we uh, look at the art um, movement which was also parallel to the typographic uh, uh, movement there was baroque and rococo so if you uh, look at baroque rococo art style and architectural style it was very ornate and uh, from that the uh, typography initial typography was also very ornate and later there was a lot of simplification happened in art movement and as well as architecture movement and same reflection also we can see in typographic uh, movement so humanist uh, typographic movement was uh, derived from uh, was contemporary and uh, derived from that. So there was a contemporary revival of historical fonts, and it was much more simplified. And each revival uh, was respond to a reaction against the, uh, as we uh, discuss the ornate uh, style of uh, uh, the old classical style. So here uh, on the right hand side, we can see a lot of juxtaposition of different kind of styles and how the um, uh, how it changed. There, there were uh, two more um, important things. Uh, one is the um, fr um, uh, Roman typefaces that was evolved first, and then uh, we know the Italic typefaces, which was uh, even the same typefaces can have an Italic version, which is a slanted version, which looks again more calligraphic, but it um, evolved later because because of the functional use of it. Because if you see. A particular typefaces and its italic version. Italic version is much more sleek in nature, and uh, it is easy to cast because, as we discussed, uh, the fir uh, first it has to be cast, uh, it has to be chiseled on a, a wood wood block to make uh, make the first block. So uh, chiseling a straight upright. Um, later is uh, was difficult uh, because um, the artisans used to hold the chisel and chisel it uh, with uh, with the hammer so uh, chiseling a uh, italic uh, later was much more easier because it was it has a particular slant and also it was light and it has less material so it um, uh, the production cost of a book was less so um, italic font was uh, derived from an economic perspective um, because of its less material and ease, ease of use and it was definitely faster than the uh, uh, creation um, process of creating italic uh, font was faster than the uh, Roman upright font. So uh, in the 16th century printers began to uh, integrate Roman and italic forms into type uh, families. So as we right now have uh, the, um, uh, the italic and as well as the Roman version. So uh, some part, a part of highlights will be in italic or some part of uh, if the body is completely italic then some uh, part of highlight can be in Roman. So this uh, there was a mix and match of italics and Roman were there. But keeping in mind that the 
X height matches because if X height doesn't match, then it will look like a different uh, type faces or different size will be different. So each and every, uh, if we uh, take one type faces and uh, change it to uh, into italic and then again start writing it uh, in uh, Roman, in uh, you can do that in uh, Microsoft. Um, word then you can see the x height is always constant it does not change in italics and uh, it, italics version as well as in roman version. So, uh, so that is uh, how the integrity of uh, italics and roman of particular typhus happens. So, uh, right now we come back to the more uh, come to the morphology um, logic of typhus. So, how we recognize a typhus uh, by its different uh, part of uh, uh, one font. Uh, so, um, uh, now we, uh, we can discuss the what is uh, the difference between font and typefaces. So, typefaces is like uh, Times New Roman is one typeface, but Times New Romans each and every alphabet will be one font. So, uh, font and typeface has a slight uh, difference and uh, uh, while we, uh, we use in uh, design will uh, there is a slight difference in typefaces and fonts. So, here we can see in the um, photograph that uh, it is uh, different morphological parts are uh, described properly. So, here uh, if we look at the F that is uh, capital or uppercase F, the top from the top to the bottom the complete this distance is a cap height. Now, we can see the X height is the small letters top part to the bottom part that is called the x height. If we type x in a particular uh, type faces, the x will have small x will have that uh, this um, this height. So, this is called the x the small x height. This is the baseline from where the type faces uh, base bases are ap apart from uh, the y, p and which uh, uh, fonts has a lower descender. So, the y, p, f their uh, lower parts are called the descender. Descender starts under the baseline and ends till the uh, lower most po uh, point. A has a particular feature which is called bowl and then uh, E, C, these uh, uh, fonts has a particular ending which is called finial and sometimes we can see that uh, some um, letters which comes very close joins together and creates a different kind of form, uh, different kind of um, um, form. And uh, so, here also in um, print media there were uh, these fonts were chiseled together. These fonts are, um, uh, these are uh, special cases uh, where uh, they used to make their uh, these uh, two fonts together. Because if uh, these fonts are um, separate then there will be a larger blank space be in between these two. So, this is called uh, ligature, ligature and similarly F also has a uh, termin, um, end point which is not called finial in um, like um, C or E, it is called a terminal and S has a spine which joins the upper part and the lower part of the S and um, all these letters like H, D, L they have the ascender, the small letters, but which goes until the cap height that is called ascender. Uh, similarly, uh, B, ha uh, B has a uh, crossbar, even the R will ha also have a crossbar. Okay. Uh, right now, we can uh, uh, the, all the definitions are uh, written over here, so you can go through this and this will be also uh, circulated to you. Um, uh, uh, through notes, so you can uh, read what is um, uh, what is the definition of x site, what is the definition of uh, baseline cap site, cap site, and everything is written over here. So you can go through this. Uh, so now in height, there are many uh, other things to uh, discuss because uh, in height it dif um, differentiates the. Uh, visual uh, impact of a typefaces if uh, we change the height to uh, create more emphasis or uh, like uh, headings and other things we change uh, generally we change the height. So, and uh, then we uh, you can see uh, in a word it is denoted by P. So, what is that? So, we will discuss that uh, this right now. So, height attempts to standardize the measurement of a type uh, design um, of different fonts. So, uh, 
uh, this is a measurement of a type faces heights. So, uh, a height of a particular 8 uh, points uh, Helvetica and 8 points uh, times New Roman. So, they uh, will be more or less similar, there will be differences, uh, but it will be more or less similar, it will not match with the 24 points uh, Helvetica, uh, will not match uh, with a 8 points uh, Centaur or something like that. So, there is, uh, there is a need of standardization to understand what should be uh, the height of a particular uh, print or digital media. So, it is the um, pointing system. So, one point equals to one point in uh, uh, the typography which, uh, which is generally denoted by P is 170, uh, uh, seven, uh, it is uh, divide, one inch is divided by uh, 72 parts and each one part is equals to one point in typographic measurement. So, it is almost uh, equal to 0 0.35 millimeter. So, 12 point equals to 1 pica and then uh, this is a this is an, uh, another unit of typefaces. But typefaces can also be uh, measured in inch, millimeter or pixels, but generally the uh, measurement used for typefaces uh, is pica and points. So, here is a, a relationship of uh, picas and points. So, what uh, 8p, uh, which, uh, what we uh, see in this, uh, uh, in, in the word pad, it is uh, actually 8 picas are denoted as 8p uh, and then uh, points which is li like 12 points equals to 1 pica. So, uh, tw uh, if 1 pica is divided into 12 small equal part, so each one uh, part will be 1 points. So, uh, it is denoted by P8, P will come first and then 8. So, in case of pica, uh, the pica is denoted after, uh, after the digit, how, uh, how much is it. So, if it is uh, 8 pica plus 4 point, it will be denoted at, as 8 P4, because P again stands for, uh, uh, P is after 8, so it is pica and P is before 4, so it is 4, so 4 point. So, 8 points Helvetica with uh, 9, uh, so, sorry, 8 uh, uh, Pika Helvetica with 9 point uh, of line spacing will be 8 by 9 Helvetica. Now, we come uh, uh, also discuss the width of our typefaces. Even in some uh, cases, the typefaces with uh, without changing its own visual style, it might change it, its width. So, uh, in uh, some typefaces, we can see a single typeface has a wider variation and uh, a single typeface can also have a uh, narrower or condensed variation, right. Uh, so, uh, these uh, wide, narrow, condensed, uh, extra black, black, these, these variations uh, can, uh, can, can differentiate the typefaces uh, uh, visual uh, dominance. So, more the wider, uh, 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 wider the typefaces are, the it will ha uh, it will uh, attract users uh, eye more. And if it is condensed and narrow, it will um, it will uh, blend with the um, background, or, and it, it will not have a visual um, emphasis. And then we uh, come back to the uh, uh, next uh, step, uh, stages is uh, kerning. So, right now we were uh, discussing about morphology of a single font. So, how these fonts, um, uh, um, different parts of the fonts are and how, um, how to uh, change these uh, uh, different fonts. Now, we discuss the spacing of two different fonts, how we juxtapose two different fonts in a word uh, that is very important. Otherwise, if the spacing is more, then the, uh, it, it will not be proper, um, it will be loosely connected. And if the spacing is very tight, then it will, it will seem like it will overlap. So, the uh, uh, term kerning depicts how, what is the horizontal spacing between two pairs of letter in a particular uh, um, word. So, it, uh, the main motto of kerning is uh, the text should look homogeneous and it will uh, eventually create uh, increased readability of the text. If we look at uh, the figure, the first top figure. Uh, there are equal spacing between different shapes. So, first uh, let me tell you, if, uh, if we uh, look at the English uh, typefaces, uh, each and every typefaces has, uh, can be depicted in an abstract geometric uh, form, like first A, V, 
these are triangles, A is an upright triangle, uh, V is a, a reverse triangle, O is a circle, C and D they are half circles, H, T, these things are like uh, squares. So we can uh, understand a figure ground relationship uh, with, uh, with the type faces and uh, their background with black and white combination of abstract geometric patterns. So if we look at the first um, uh, um, uh, series where the uh, uh, where these different shapes were juxtaposed with equal spacing in between. So the end point and uh, of the first um, form and the starting point of the next form has an equal spacing in all these cases in the uh, cases of triangle to um, square, square to circle and uh, so on and so forth. But in these cases if you look at uh, uh, the, pre, uh, the first uh, series, it does not look equal. If we uh, look, uh, look visually that each and every um, uh, shape's juxtaposition does not look uh, equally spaced. But in the other, um, uh, on the other um, side, if you look at the lower uh, image, it looks equally spaced because the because what happens here uh, but um, in the in the um, uh, next series the spacing between them are not equal they are different but still it looks equal because uh, in in uh, the cases of kerning also this happens because the space in between the void in between the area of the void has to be equal not the distance so in case of the first uh, scenario if we look at this the void between the triangle and the square is this much and the void between the, uh, the square and the circle is this much. So in, in the case of triangle it is only having one sided void, in case of uh, circle it has a two sided void. So in case of triangle, uh, in case of circle the area, the void area is more. If, if we have an equal distance the void area is becoming more because uh, there is um, the void area is distributed equally distributed in the both the sides. So that is why we need to reduce the uh, area in between them uh, and, and th this space uh, we, uh, it can be more clear. So the void area uh, increases because there is a, tri a triangle, triangle is also shrinked on the top and circle is also shrinked on the both the sides. So the shrink, uh, shrink uh, if, uh, uh, because of the shrinkage is more so the void area is becoming more over here and because of the shrinkage is less the void area here and here are less. That is why we need to decrease the spacing over here. Similarly, it is happening over here and again uh, the similar cases are uh, we can see over here. So that that is um, how the carding has to happen. So first it has, um, uh, there was an experiment by David uh, Kindersley. So he experimented with the abstract geometric forms and uh, um, uh, idealize what should be the spaces between uh, different fonts. So for carning, also we need to uh, look at the spaces in between uh, the uh, particular fonts because some fonts uh, has a, a um, totally enclosed white spaces like for example O. So this is fixed. But for example, uh, for example of uh, if we uh, take the cases of Z, uh, this is not fixed because. Uh, this is a serif font which is serif and sans serif we will uh, discuss later. But if we look at uh, the font in the first, the Z, Z has an extended end. So here the white spaces here in the Z is more defined. But here in this case this is called sans serif font which does not has a end is not so defined. So here the white spaces are merging with the other white spaces. So it's it has less defined white spaces. So if we uh, if if you count the spacing be between these two, here the spacing is more. You count the grid, the spacing is more, because this white space is already defined. So this space, what we read the uh, uh, background, backgrounds area is becoming less less because it's divided into two different part here and here. But in case of this part, it is not divided into two different parts. So if we increase that, if we provide the equal space of this, what we have provided in the first uh, 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 cases, so the area will look more because this is a one unified whole white space. So we have to position O and Z closer in this second cases. So there are different methods of um, uh, different um, uh, 
designers have experimented with car uh, carnings. So, three of the most uh, uh, three of the examples will be uh, Robert uh, Simbash and Walter Tracy method and Maguel Souza's me uh, method. You can uh, go through the uh, uh, their uh, works and, uh, and these are available. Um, uh, this will be available online and look at their carding uh, process and their experiments. So now we uh, uh, we come to the classification of type faces. So the broader class, uh, classifications of uh, type faces were serifs and sans serifs. As uh, I was just discussing, uh, the serif is a small decorative extension at the end of each font of type faces of serif style. So uh, th that was the example of serif. Uh, so this is Baskerville, which is a serif font. We can look at um, uh, look at the the first example, which uh, the A has a extended um, uh, ornate end. So, this is a serif font and this is uh, definitely an older version of uh, typefaces. It evolved from calligraphy and evolved from the chiseled um, stone because initially when uh, the engraver, um, uh, the artisans used to engrave with a chisel, uh, creating a sharp bend was difficult with the chisel. So, that is why uh, the end used uh, to create a better finish of the end they used to have a uh, border, uh, they used to have an extension of the end that is actually uh, uh, translated into, uh, into the print media and that become the serif uh, font of print media. And also during chiseling, they used to hold the chisel and chisel has a flat end and they used to uh, hold a hammer to chisel that. So, when they are chiseling and uh, they used to hold the chisel on the uh, left hand and use, uh, hold the hammer on the right hand. So, when chiseling, this side of the A used to uh, become narrower because they used to hold the chisel like this. So, it, when it comes like this, it becomes narrower, but when it comes like this, it becomes wider. So, when you, uh, they used to chisel and um, hold the chisel and uh, hold the hammer on the uh, right hand side. So, eventually this, this side of all the fonts will give a thicker uh, stroke. So, this, uh, this is a transition from uh, stone engraving and handwritten uh, calligraphic thing to uh, print media. So, later there was a sans serif font which uh, developed later on the uh, uh, more, uh, more usage of digital media and print media. So, sans serif font do does not have a ornate end. So, it is it looks more modern and looks more minimal in style. So, sans serif etymologically sans means without. So, without the serif is a sans serif. So, this is an example of future font which is a sans serif font. So, now uh, if we uh, come uh, go deeper into the broader classification, so there is a basic system of classification of typefaces which evolved in 19th century because there was a lot of different uh, typefaces uh, uh, available uh, in uh, by the, um, uh, by the um, uh, printers. So, uh, first was a humanist or old, uh, old style which evolved from uh, direct uh, calligraphy. For example, there was a sabon which is uh, designed by uh, 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 a, ty a type of um, uh, designer in 1966 which evolved from Garamond, which uh, Garamond you must have seen is a very uh, famous um, old, um, uh, old uh, ty um, uh, style typefaces, which has uh, in these typefaces you can see if you uh, closely look, um, look, so uh, the thickness of each and every uh, letter. Uh, does not um, is not constant. If we look at the A uh, very clear uh, carefully, this is thinner and when it goes towards the uh, towards the bottom, it is becoming a little wider because it uh, and that shows the direct transition from hand painted uh, posters and hand painted calligraphy of a typography. So, there is a uh, they wanted to uh, mimic the handmade uh, style of a uh, calligraphy. Even in the A, if you see this uh, uh, end is thicker and then it goes thi uh, thin and then it again becomes thi um, thick. So, again in the bowel of the A, uh, a this is uh, thick to generally it is uh, becoming thin. So, next is a transitional. So, uh, 
for example, uh, Baskerville typhus is a transitional. So, there, there was a attempt to modernize, attempt to minimize this kind of variations in a particular font uh, to make it more um, minimal and uh, has a modern, uh, it has a modern look. So, here we can see the A throughout has a similar uh, uh, distance here from top to bottom here also uh, which has a similar distance and even um, the uh, serif edges also is not so drastically different if we come back here the serif edge is also not uh, uh, equal to this um, uh, main stem so uh, even in the serif edge uh, the bottom part is not uh, not flat it's carved here we can see it's absolutely flat again the uh, there is a less variation of thickness in the uh, small uh, letter as well. So, the next one is um, absolutely modern and this was um, uh, this is an example of uh, Bodhini type faces this this was more modern than the previous one here we can see it is absolute straight line. So, in, in the previous one there was a gradual transition from the top to uh, to the side, but here there is a drastic difference and it, this is absolutely modern and here also if we see, uh, look at the top part of the uh, A it is chiseled and here none of the transitions are gradual. So, it is just some straight line. So, if we uh, also um, look at the art movement, so what happened is uh, during the art movement uh, and architectural movement it was uh, Baroque Rococo, then um, there was a um, industrial revolution and modernization started and gradually there was more international uh, to, uh, we moved towards the international uh, movement. In international movement uh, we started designing um, very uh, minimalist, um, uh, we um, uh, adopted minimalist style and uh, very um, uh, it uh, moved towards organic to more geometric. So, a similar thing is happening in type, uh, type faces. So, uh, it was moving from organic uh, style to gradual, um, gradually it is moving towards the geometric, uh, more geometric fashion. So, the next was uh, uh, then after that there was a ev uh, evolution in the uh, type faces. So, uh, there was a change in uh, typographic style. So, uh, people used to uh, uh, exclude the extra ornamentations and that become the sans serif type faces. So, sans serif is actually more modern uh, than uh, all serif fonts. So, all the sans serif uh, movements, all the sans serif classifications came after serif, um, mostly after serif uh, type faces. So, serif, uh, the, the, to, uh, towards the modernization process and towards the uh, uh, the decreased uh, ornamentations of um, uh, uh, visual um, visual ornamentation, uh, serif fonts evolved. And another functional uh, need of serif font was uh, there was a, a change from print media to digital media. So there was uh, different digital um, displays were there, and uh, depicting a serif font was very difficult in um, old uh, versions of digital media because that time the pixels were more. So there was um, larger pixels. So, depicting uh, typefaces like this or rather this through uh, larger pixels were absolutely impossible during that time because th here this curve was very difficult to uh, depict in a pixelated uh, format. So, in that case is these kind of uh, straight lines angles were easy to depict in a pixelated digital um, display. So, that's, that was another um, need to uh, design a sans serif fonts. In sans serif movements also there was a, a humanist sans serif. So, here as we know that there was a human touch and here uh, Gil Sans is an example. So, Gil Sans in Gil Sans if we look at uh, the Gil Sans has a varied uh, different thickness. If you look at the small a it is more visible, uh, a's bowl is thicker over here and when it joins with the stem it is uh, thinner. Then there is a transition and it is going towards the more more and more uh, ge geometric form of the uh, sans serif um, itself. So, sans serif transitionals are also called uh, grotesque and then there was neo grotesque uh, which is a revival of um, its modified grotesque. So, Helvetica is uh, one of the famous uh, typefaces designed under this um, 
um, typographic style. It is designed in, um, around the 1950s. So, if we look at Helvetica and if we compare with the Gill Sands, the differences uh, in the smaller cases is more visible. The difference of thickness is minimized. And next, if we uh, go back to the more geometric form, for example, uh, the Futura, which is uh, very, um, uh, th these things are very uh, late modern and uh, more uh, minimal in style. And here, uh, the Paul Runner's Futura font is, uh, if we look at, it's absolutely geometric. If we look at the A, it resembles a triangle, and even the top edge of A is a pointed peak. In case of Helvetica and um, Gil Sands, it was it was again chiseled, but in case of uh, Futura, it's absolutely pointed uh, peak. And if we look at the O of a Futura, it's a perfect circle, so it doesn't uh, the thickness doesn't change. But if we look at A, it's also uh, similar to a circle, which is which doesn't have any slant. In other fonts, you can uh, see the some of the O's has a particular slant. It doesn't have. Here, there is only there is a little change in the uh, thickness because if the thickness is same over here uh, on the right hand side and uh, in the joining point then this part will look black so this part will have a uh, when uh, this is printed in a small uh, paper so it will be um, uh, with a small type height so this part will appear uh, um, as a black spot so to uh, avoid that this part is only um, decreased as uh, less as possible so, there is another classification uh, which is uh, Egyptian or we call it a slab serif. This was uh, derived more uh, on a postmodern style. This is after uh, modern, but uh, if we look at the postmodern uh, movements and postmodern art and architecture movement, postmodern historicism uh, also went back to history. So, there was a repetition of history and there was a trend in the postmodern to use more ornamentation more ornamentation and more um, uh, adding more aesthetic value, uh, more aesthetic um, orna um, elements into a typeface. So, this came after modern, after this um, sleek design of typefaces and then we again went back to a serif style, but serif style here are um, not the same as the previous one. So, here we can see the equal emphasis of the serif ends. The ornamentation had an equal emphasis on the body of the, uh, uh, of the font. So, it has it, these are very thick and almost as equal um, to the main um, elements of the font. So, this, this uh, crossbar of the A is a main element of a, a distinguishable feature of uh, uh, the font A. So, here we can if we see the um, uh, ornate serif end which is also equal to the um, uh, almost equal to the uh, thickness of this crossbar. So, uh, we can see the importance of um, ornamentation again in postmodern uh, um, era is uh, was growing after uh, mo modern minimalist style. So, for example, cla um, uh, Claridon was one example of a uh, Egyptian slab serif font. So, here, uh, here we have all these fonts, different fonts together, so that we, we can have a better look at each and every fonts and how they are different and they have a similar um, height. So, here uh, the Roman typefaces are basic fonts and we will uh, discuss about the type families. Uh, you must have heard about the type uh, families in a particular font, uh, for example, Helvetica, Universe and uh, most of the famous fonts as a ty uh, type families. So, they are the same fonts, but they look different. As we were discussing the width of a font and uh, we also discussed the italics version and the Roman version of the font. Uh, so, Roman uh, typefaces were the designed uh, first basic ty type fonts. When it was slanted and uh, translated into italic fonts, that the font does not change because the uh, visual identity of the font was uh, similar, but it is just it is uh, slanted or italics and then again you can make it bold, you can make it condensed, you can make it extended. So, all these things uh, without disrupting the visual identity of a particular typeface creates a type family. For example, universe, universe which is a which is designed by a famous uh, uh, typeface designer Adrian Frutiger who also designed the uh, typeface Frutiger that is also a very famous uh, typeface. So, uh, here we have all the typeface family of a uh, universe. So, universe family has a 
normal uh, roman type this is uh, this is it and the second one is the italic version then we have this uh, bold wide versions uh, bold and italic and then we have uh, condensed over here very condensed and then uh, the condensed uh, sh uh, session dilutes and then we have a uh, very thick or black versions of a particular type so they all together create a type family so here uh, we have discussed the basics of typography we discussed the evolution we discussed the classification and how to uh, distinguish um, a typeface uh, from other typeface using the morphology in the, uh, in the next part we'll uh, try to uh, implement that into a, your design through various um, examples uh, in the next module thank you